hand versus chainsaw. It looks painful. Our hospitals are taking care of more patients than ever. You're right. <laughs> With medical teams under constant pressure. Can Dr. Pixie come to resource, please? Somebody as poorly as this little one, we really need to treat them quickly. To meet our expectations. I'm just worried about what it's going to be like afterwards. But there's a crucial member of the team we sometimes forget. I've never ever been on a bed like this. The hospital bed. Another ward, another story, another bed. In our lifetime, we are likely to need one of them at least three times. I've probably spent a quarter of my life on a hospital bed. <laughs> in this series, our cameras have been given unprecedented access to beds in four very different hospitals across the country. It's life, life and death, and everything that goes in between. We'll see the world through the bed's eyes. Hello, my love. Hiya. As they share the most challenging. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Most intimate. Yeah. And most rewarding. <laughs> moments of our lives. Thank you for being here. Have you been anywhere else? And a hospital cannot function without beds. Beds are vital. This is The Secret Life of the Hospital Bed. Close to the heart of Newcastle city centre is the Royal Victoria Infirmary. Its state-of-the-art A&E department, which opened just six years ago, operates 24-7. That patient is just about to go round. This gentleman's not well enough to move at the minute. It's 29 beds. See up to 2,500 patients a week. Swing your legs up, make yourself comfortable. Right, I've asked them to x-ray that hand, so okay. you can pop down off the trolley now. a and &E bed seven is prepped, ready for its next patient. 51-year-old Astrid and husband Phil have just returned from a holiday in Ibiza. What's that She's worried her vision may have been damaged following an insect bite. We've been on holiday. I was sitting on the balcony last night. You feel something on you, sort of like flicked it. Um, felt my face and there was like a little lump at the side. And as the day obviously went on, by the time it was time to go to the airport, it was just getting bigger and bigger. I mean, I couldn't look around the duty-free shop in the airport. I was gutted. I was wand wandering around. I couldn't see. Like, what I was, like, trying to have a look because I had the sunglasses on because the lights as well were hurting my eyes, well, hurting that eye. I have got pain, but it's actually... I'm going to point to this eye <laughs> in case I poke my cell in it because I can't see. Um, it's actually in the corner. It's sort of like the corner, but the rest of it... I can't, I can't feel it because all, all of this, he has numb. And as I'm talking to you now, the pain is now getting worse. It's now moving down to the bottom bit. So, yes, I am. I am worried, concerned. Dr Smith has carried out an initial examination of the swelling. She's had an insect bite, by the sounds of things, on holiday, and then had some localised swelling, like a localised allergic reaction. If Astrid's glands are also swollen, it could be a sign of a widespread infection. She's due to be back at work in three days. I'm a machine operator, so I actually I, I work on packing machines in like in a factory, a well-known factory. So, yeah, I need my eyes. <laughs> Dr. Smith is back. So, I've had a chat with um, our consultant Ruben. He isn't concerned about it in your eye because obviously. Your vision on the eye is better yeah, than the other, than the other side, <laughs> which is good. What we're going to do is treat you for to prevent any infection. So that's what this is for. So you need to take two once a day for five days. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten. Obviously, if things aren't getting better, if it gets worse, it's worse seeing your GP as well because it can give you some ointment. All right. Yes, okay. brilliant. Um, so All right, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. With the doctor confident there's nothing more serious, 
Astrid leaves A&E bed seven. They're not concerned, but if it does swell up or go red, then <sighs> to either go to the GP or come back, continue oh, with me antihistamines <laughs> and take me antibiotics. <laughs> And hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Just fingers crossed that I don't get the infection. <laughs> In less than two hours, A&E Bed 7 has helped Astrid get diagnosed and treated. It's prepped for its next patient. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Down the corridor, a and &E Bed 15 is waiting for its next patient. Hello, my name's Jackie. Second year law student Siobhan has a potential broken toe. Just have a seat over here. She's been referred to A&E by her GP and has come here with her friend Mary. So have you seen anyone else about this? I've been to the doctors today and they sent me straight here. Well, what did the doctor think? Uh, he doesn't know if it's broken, I might need, I'll need an x-ray, but he thinks it's infected as well. Oh my goodness, it looks pretty sore looking. Yeah, it is pretty sore. Yeah, a little bit of blister in there. Yeah. You haven't been buying new shoes or anything recently? No, I, I tried to wear some shoes yesterday because I had to leave the house and that's where the blisters come from. Oh, I see. Right. Because it's rubbed at the top of my shoe because it's so swollen. Yeah, it looks pretty painful. On a Friday evening, Siobhan works as a bartender in Newcastle. When you were at work on Friday, did anything happen? With the... Not that I remember, but it was just hurting after work, so I assume I must have stubbed it or something. Right. And then I went out and I woke up on Saturday and it was really swollen. What happened since then? It's just got a lot worse really since then. Like, it's just swelled a bit more and it's um, like kind of spread a little bit down the foot. Yeah. Is it very painful? Yeah. <laughs> Siobhan injured her toe five days ago. Nurse practitioner Lyon thinks the infection may be spreading. Got a little bit of tracking going up your foot as well. Yeah. See that little red line? I have to really look after that. Right, I'm not going to do anything drastic with it. Okay, we're just looking at the bottom, but just okay. see what's going on. Can you feel me touching? Yeah. yeah. Can you move it at all? Ah, ah, ah. That's painful all yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way, just where it's red. Just here. Yeah. Right. Okay. But I think we'll need to do an X-ray on this. Yeah. Okay, because it may be broken. And that may be the reason why it's so swollen. I can't think of any other reason. I can't see any other puncture wounds or anything that's going on with the toe. If there is a possibility you've injured it, we need to exclude the next thing. Yes, put a fracture, sorry. Siobhan and A&E Bed 15 are on the move. I can't believe I'm being wheeled around for a toe. This is great. <laughs> I feel like royalty. I just want to get it sorted so I can walk, because at the moment, like, it's hard to, like, go to uni, so I just kind of need it sorted. It's a toe at the end of the day, like it's not that important. It's just, it is actually affecting me though a lot more than I think a toe would normally. Hi. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 25% of all bones in the human body are in the feet. A toe bone is one of the top five most common bones to break. You can just relax your foot there. Delays in treatment can lead to long-term chronic pain and arthritis. Siobhan's x-rays reveal no breaks. I'll just give you a little slip through and back through with your tini, OK? OK. It's back to the consultation room and nurse practitioner Lyon. Well, you maybe have stubbed it and your bruising is caused by that. Wow. But the blister is obviously caused by the shoe. Cute. What you've ended up with is with an infection. Now the tracking, if you notice that little red line we were looking at earlier, yeah. it looks a bit better since you've had your foot elevated. So you can see how good it is to oh, elevate wow. your foot. So. Nurse practitioner Lyon prescribes antibiotics for the infection. She also recommends Siobhan rests to stop the infection from spreading. We're going to ask you to elevate your foot because you don't want this line spreading up your leg. Okay. Because you can become unwell with that. You know, the infection is localised just now, right. but it can travel and make you feel pretty ill. So if anything happens, your foot swells, or any more anything tracking comes, comes you've got to come back and see it's okay. Right, okay. okay. We'll have to rework like that. What do you do? Well, I work behind a bar. Mm, so it's not much elevation allowed there. 
Yeah. Unless I have literally one foot on the bar while I'm like pouring a pint, I don't think that'll be allowed. If you just bend your knee and put your toe on the paper, that'd be great. I think it's mainly the blister that's the problem, you know. Yeah. Does it matter I about the blister? Like, could you not pop it? No. It, Is it that, bad to pop blisters or not? To be honest, it's not that tense. You know what I mean? This. So it's full of fluid, and the fluid does help with healing as well. So should you never pop blisters? It will, it will pop down itself. Oh my god, what's that? Siobhan's toe is cleaned and dressed to protect it. That'll make it feel more comfortable. I'm not happy at all. I've got so much to do. You really do need to I will. rest I will. it and elevate it. If you don't do that, it's only going to get worse. I feel really bad, right, and really guilty that I'm going to be missing work and uni for a tour. Siobhan is booked in for a checkup in two days' time. She can now head home. a &E Bed 15 gets ready for its next patient. Birmingham is home to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. It has one of the largest hand surgery units in the country. There may be some numbness around that area afterwards, but that okay. will recover with time. Every year, 11 consultants perform more than 3,000 hand trauma operations. We're waiting for those bones to knit together, so we're going to put a plate and screws in. Around 80% of these happen here on the day surgery ward. Uh, you in here, Lena? 25 and 26 have arrived. You okay if I bring them in? Yes. The 81 beds here work 12 hour shifts. They transport patients for operations to repair and reconstruct their hands. Day surgery bed 52 is waiting for its first patient of the day. We've got Kathy P until half three, haven't you? Yeah. So hopefully by that time we'll, we can start pulling stuff. You heard your break this morning? Yeah. Good. Susan shattered several bones in her hand when she fell while on holiday in Rhodes with her husband Brian. It was a really good holiday, very restful, um, and we were only just discussing uh, the day of the accident how well the, ho the holiday had, had done us, and then I go and have this nasty fall. She received initial treatment in Greece, but now needs reconstructive surgery. Without it, she risks losing some of the use of her left hand. He tells me I'm not a good patient. <laughs> Susan has worked as a midwife for 32 years. Brian, do you think medical professions no. make good patients? They don't. They don't appreciate the lack of control they suddenly have over a situation that they normally have control over. Brian's not a trained nurse when he's looking after me as well. I want things done to a certain standard. And I can't always perform to that standard. <laughs> I've been drying her hair this morning, not done it right. <laughs> <laughs> not doing it right at all. <laughs> no, you're not. You're too. You're not firm enough. Not firm enough. And then mm. you've been too firm now. I think I'll be okay as a, as a patient today. It's it's uh, later on when I'm a convalescent that I'll be frustrated. Tell me about it. I'll be there, <laughs> making the lunch, putting the washing out, washing the pots, that sort of thing. But I don't mind. I can do it. <laughs> He had to have a little nap yesterday afternoon because he was so worn out from looking after me, so... Yep. Hiya. Nurse Guy settles Susan onto bed 52. Next, she's visited by consultant surgeon Mr Tan. Hello. Hi, Susan. My name's Simon Tan. Oh, I'm one of the consultants here. Nice to meet you. Hello. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Fortunately, I'm right-handed. And when was your fall? Friday night. And so did you, you went to a hospital in Rhodes? Went to the hospital in Rhodes. Yeah. I've got some paperwork of what they did there. Right. They, they did an X-ray. Yeah. I did bring the X-ray into a &E on Sunday. The, the fracture is quite comminuted, so it's in quite a few pieces yeah. and it extends into the joint and those pieces aren't sitting the way that they're meant to. Oh, right, yeah. So the idea of today is, is that we want to restore the, the bone and the architecture mm. and the joint as accurately as we can 
and the reason that we're doing that is because we know from experience that if we leave them displaced and as displaced as yours is, is there is a significant risk of loss of function, ongoing pain and deterioration in the wrist uh, down yeah. the line. And there is a risk of a degenerative arthritis development. Now, once we've put all those pieces of bone back into place, we've got to make sure that they stay there. So we achieve that by putting an implant in. So it's a titanium implant, a metal plate all with right, some screws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. In terms of what you can expect afterwards, it won't mm. be pretty sore actually. Mm. So we're gonna have to arrange a little cocktail of medications for you to go home on. And we'll probably be in a plaster just for the first week, 10 days. You're not gonna be able to do anything manual maybe for six weeks, right. eight weeks. Okay, great. Thank you. Shortly. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What time is it? Eleven o'clock. Feel like I've been here hours. <laughs> <laughs> what time did you get here? I said we got here about twenty past nine. Already? Yes. Yeah. Off we go. See you. See you later. Bye bye. bye, -bye. It's not very romantic, my husband, are you? Never gets me kissing. Men generally aren't. Susan's procedure in the day surgery clinic will take up to two hours. She will also spend up to an hour in the anaesthetic room. Day surgery bed 52 will wait nearby for the duration of the procedure. You will feel some cold gel going on top you now. Okay. Anaesthetist Dr Cibelli is using a nerve block on Susan's hand. It's a targeted local anaesthetic which should numb all feeling in the area. Would you mind to do this? Flex. Yes. Is he a bit more difficult than normal? Yeah. Yes. It feels heavy. It feels yes. heavy. Okay, good. That's exactly what I want. All right. It will allow her to be awake throughout the operation and will speed up her recovery time. Obviously, it's worrying time, but um, I do trust everybody. I'm feeling okay. My hand is feeling quite comfortable now because the anaesthetist has put all this stuff in. Susan can't go straight into surgery, as the anaesthetic needs time to take effect. I'm feeling quite relaxed now, listening to this music. I'm quite chill. The nurse put it on. It's quite nice, whatever she's chosen. I can wiggle my toes to it and... <laughs> 30 minutes later, anaesthetist Dr Gibelli checks his block has worked. I'm spraying you here. Mm. Looks yeah? cold. cold. Yeah. Can you feel it here? Yeah. No. Can you feel it here? No. No. So it's an amazing block, isn't it? Can't okay. Feel it. I wish you good luck with here today. Thank you. I started to feel a bit shaky now. It's probably nerves because I'm going into the water. Alright, so just keep your other hand inside the trolley for us. Don't reach out through the walls or the doors. Husband Brian will have to wait alone for several hours until Susan returns from theatre. At Newcastle's Royal Victoria Infirmary, the Minor Injuries Unit is open seven days a week, between eight in the morning and nine at night. Staff have access to up to six beds in this area, seeing and treating a wide range of patients with urgent but not emergency conditions. Bed two has just become free. Its next patient is 22-year-old Hannah. She's come in with a painful abscess on her abdomen. She's worried it may be a sign of a more serious infection. It really, really, really hurts. <laughs> so I can't... I've had ice on it and I've had, I've had loads of stuff to try and... It's like uh, alcohol wipes on it and it's just not getting better. Hannah is taken to minor injuries bed too. Is it yourself up? And then one of the nurse practitioners. Swing your legs up, make yourself comfortable. Nurse practitioner Kendall has worked at the RVI for 16 years. So tell me what's been happening. Uh, basically, I've got sort of an infected abscess on my side, uh -huh. on my uh, right side. So and has anything come out of it? Yeah, quite a lot. Right. Quite a lot of green right. and black okay. gunk. And this is not Hannah's first abscess. Yeah. She's had several over the last three months. 
that big right. and black and raised and full of pus. And... I went into hospital and thinking it was a spider bite and I had to get a big, like, two pound size wound cut open and squeezed all the gunk out. And you can see if my leg's that wide, it's about, it's about that big. I was in hospital for three days and then I came out and it's been recurring over and over again. Abscesses can be caused when bacteria gets under the surface of the skin. Yeah. Hannah's side is scarred due to previous abscesses. There's one like here and one there and they all just sort of come and go. And whether they fill with pus or not is dependent on how quickly I can get some strong antibiotics into me. I went in with it and they gave me some uh, flucoxylin. Mm -hmm. The more antibiotics are taken, the less effective they can be. Infections can become immune to antibiotics. If you give me flucoxylin, it's not so, going to work. Right. I feel like I've, I've done that and it won't work. So mm -hmm. she gave me Cormoxiclax. Right. Uh -huh. Hannah wants right. to make sure that she doesn't get any more painful abscesses. I think, you know, as you build up sort of maybe a tolerance to antibiotics, it's just not working anymore. So I need to have something stronger to sort of combat it. I'm just really unsure about what it could be and nobody knows. And have you ever gotten to the bottom of this? Have you seen your GP and have they done any bloods to see why? No. Anything? Or That's what I'm hoping to get from right. today or okay. just get a referral somewhere because yeah. it's just happening all the time. Yeah, but... Like one in five people in the UK, Hannah has searched online to try and self-diagnose. Looking for symptoms on the internet is basically one of the things that makes you a bit more paranoid about what you've got. There's so many uh, different things that can cause an abscess or can cause a little spot to fill with like gunk or pus or something like that. But once someone's put something in your head, you sort of can't shake the feeling of it and then it makes you a bit more scared. But it hasn't got better. Hannah's worried about what some of her friends have suggested. I, I spoke to one of the girls I work with who had seen uh, like MRSA when she was in, uh, in Thailand in a hospital and she said it looked very similar to that. The worst thing that they could tell me was that I had sort of a Staphylococcus aureus infection that was sort of had no cure or was a bit like I was going to have it forever. Hannah must stay with minor injuries bed too until nurse practitioner Kendall takes a swab for analysis. In Birmingham, at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Susan has left day surgery bed 52 for the operating table. She's having a plate and screws inserted to bind together bones that have shattered in her hand. Her husband of 34 years, Brian, must wait outside theatre. She's always treated illness as an imposition, a nuisance, and gets very annoyed with being ill. I'll be criticised and she'll lose a temper with me a few times, but it isn't losing it with me, it's losing it with the situation. She won't listen to me even though I've got five or six weeks of this. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I just have to uh, take it day by day. Operation over, and Susan will soon be reunited with day surgery bed 52. I'm relieved it's over, but um, I was comfortable during the procedure. I know it's in good hands. Susan's operation has been carried out with a local anaesthetic, so she doesn't need to spend long in recovery. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. He's a nice smooth drive. Hi. You all right? Yeah. And there we are. Thank you. All the best now. Thanks a lot. You take care. Are you okay? Yeah, fine, yeah. I've just had some morphine, but it's not kicked in yet. My arm's throbbing. Throbbing? Mm. Well, what happened? Um, was it painful? I think the operation was longer than they thought. Oh, more a lot longer. Than they thought, yeah. Because he said to me, an hour and a half to two, you've yeah. gone three and a half hours. Um, there was two surgeons involved. Two? Two, yeah. Oh, my word. It's quite complicated. She's worried now that she's going to constantly be in pain for the rest of her life. She's worried short term that the pain's going to be severe and that she's going to get sleepless nights. She'll be worried about her job that she may not be able to go and do it 
like she used to be able to, that will concern her, that life may not be quite the same as it was. Nurse Fulford checks Susan's pain levels. How are you feeling? Still pain? Um, it's still pain, but, you know, it's um, controllable. More women are admitted to hospital every year than men. Susan's husband will need to care for her for the next six weeks. Yes, Brian's been very supportive while I've um, sustained this injury. Yeah. It's been very challenging for him. He's been helping me do the little things like my bra up. <laughs> Little things, yeah, challenging things, yeah. And um, sometimes um, he needs asking because sometimes I don't think men always anticipate your needs, so I have to ask him, but when I ask him, he always does it. So I can't complain. You're right. Mm? I... Good. <laughs> Is it hurting still? Don't talk about it till I talk about it because okay. I'm trying to distract myself from it. I don't want to focus on it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm trying to disassociate myself with it, if you know what I mean. It's good you'll be in the afternoon. You'd have been in overnight, possibly. That might have been a good thing, though, with the level of pain I'm going to be in. Yeah, you just don't know, do you? No. If you see the nurse, just say to when do you want to get rid of us. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to scan your wristband, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. And then... Lots of magic drugs. <laughs> we'll get you up and running. I'm not usually a drug person, but I'm making exceptions today. Yeah, I would. They're a nice bright yellow as well. Oh, oh are they? Lovely. They turn your insides green. OK. There are two yellow ones. Lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's all in that. Okay. So okay. that's the slow release morphine I've just had, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that and then with the other morph that you get from pharmacy lines, like, so mm -hmm. that should help keep your pain. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. When do you want to get rid of us? Um the next 10-15. ten fifteen. <laughs> ten fifteen minutes. Seven hours after Susan settled onto day surgery bed fifty two, it's time to leave. Keep the dressing clean and dry, so if you can have a shower, put a carrier bag on it, keep it waterproof. Mm. Keep the sling on now. When you get a bed, take it from around your neck, but keep the sling actually on and keep it elevated if you've got some pillows. Yeah, that's what I've been doing, is doing it with pillows at night. Yeah, not, not using his back. No. Mm. But he doesn't like it when I'm on the back because I snore. He likes me on the side. I can't sleep on the side, so it's challenging. No. Yeah. Just going to have to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> Put up with a snore, remember? I will, I will. Decided. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Jenny. I appreciate Thank you. that. Thanks so much. Yeah. Are you ready? Do you want your coat, sir? Yeah. No, I'll just hold it. You no. sure? Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Thank now. You, bye -bye. Thanks. Right, yes, thank you. You take care. Yeah. Look after her, alright? Oh, well. <laughs> Try my best. <laughs> Day surgery bed 52 is cleaned down, ready for its next patient tomorrow. The Great North Children's Hospital in Newcastle is one of the largest paediatric units in the UK. It has its very own A&E, which is open all hours, seven days a week. I haven't got any medical beds. I need to find a bed on long stay for that patient. There are nine beds on the unit, which care for young patients who need immediate medical attention. We struggle quite regularly with the amount of beds we've got. It can be quite tricky to judge who needs a bed, who can come out of rooms. <laughs> Paediatric bed 27 is ready to receive its next patient. It's half past three in the afternoon. 13-year-old Harvey is brought to bed 27 by Nurse Mills. He's in so much pain, he can't stand up. Shimmy your bum right up here. 
Do you want me to lift your other leg? Do you want me to? Harvey's mum, Joanne, drove him to hospital after he injured himself playing badminton. Have you done this to get out of school? No. <laughs> you had a quarter past two finish as well. Oh, did bite. you? <laughs> Have you had any pain relief at all, Harvey? Um, no. Would you like some? Please. Harvey is hypermobile, or double-jointed. It's a hereditary condition that means his joints can move beyond the normal range expected. Me. My mum and my sister are all double jointed. My mum's knee locked when she was little and she had to have an operation and my sister's knee locked not long ago. Mine used to lock bent, couldn't straighten it. I used to sit funny like a W, like I tell you not to. Well, and and my leg locked behind me at a friend's house and had to be pulled out and clicked back into place. Nurse practitioners in this department work alongside doctors assessing patients. No Nurse practitioner Ainsley is looking after Harvey. Hello. 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 We got Harvey. Yeah. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. You want to tell me what's been happening today? I was playing badminton at school and okay. uh, jumped up to hit it and then like landed funny on my legs. And did you go <laughs> over and like, end up on the ground like, or? I landed in my foot went like that. Okay, so you kind of twisted a bit. Okay. Yeah. And did it feel like your knee locked? It did, like, afterwards. OK. Has this ever happened to you before? Um, like, not as bad as this. He's got um hypermobile joint, so right, he's quite okay. often with his shoulders doing this or, like, kick like that to, like, kick <laughs> them out, so... Uh -huh. I haven't seen it do this okay. before, but he's, I've had it where he's, like, it's going to go and he's kicked it out. OK, fine. Let's have a wee look at you and knees and things first. Hypermobility can cause clicking severe pain and recurrent injuries in joints. It affects one in five people in the UK. You've not been able to bend it at all? No. Have you been getting around since it happened? Um, wheelchair. wheelchair from school to car and car to here. Good. How's it feel underneath? Really sore. Really sore. On the outside there OK? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm OK. <laughs> Just underneath OK? Yeah. Well, I'm touching it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sweetheart. Can you lift it straight up? It hurts. When you do that, yeah? Can you keep it there at all? No. No? Sorry, sweetheart. I'm guessing this is really sore. Is that sore as well? It's difficult. I mean, it does look and feel just that little bit swollen mm -hmm. around this bottom end here. We'll get some x rays taken, okay? And then we'll have a look at your pictures when you come back and then we'll go from there. We'll get a porter to take, to take them around, around right. the Right. OK, okay that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, I'll drop out of this bed, then I want to go home because I've got to climb up ladders. I don't know how I'm going to climb, I'm probably just lying on the sofa bed. Do I have the dog's bed tonight? <laughs> I can't fit in it anyway. <laughs> Hospital porter Neve arrives to take Harvey to X-ray on paediatric bed 27. <laughs> It's really important to ensure that we rule out fractures, dislocations and sometimes infections in joints. The importance of that is um, quite detrimental to the child if we don't follow up these injuries and ensure that the right specialities are getting involved from the onset. Biggest worry would be crutches and not be able to go back to school. Bed 27 will stay with Harvey until he finds out just how serious his injury is. In the minor injuries unit of the Royal Victoria Infirmary, bed two is occupied by 22-year-old Hannah. She's come in with a painful abscess on her side. So has anything come out of it? Yeah, quite a lot. Right. Quite a lot of green right. and black gunk. She's worried it might be a sign of a more serious infection. Let me have a little look at your tummy then. Come lie yourself up. Swim both right. Yeah, yeah. Sure. No worries. <laughs> right, just lie back, if you don't mind. Just. An abscess is um, a small collection of pus under the skin surface that, that then grows. Sometimes it can just be on the surface, sometimes it can be deep under the skin. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Just pop, pull that down just to... Sometimes we don't do anything for them. They have to be, for us to do anything, they have to be a certain size, diameter, firmness. Yeah. Oh, 
that's firm, isn't it? Oops. Yeah. Ah. Sorry. It's okay. Ah, it's like the worst pain. I know, ever. I know, I know, I know. Just let me have a quick feel. Ah. Everywhere else, okay. Pretty much. I think you're a candidate because it's firm. Oh. Okay. Well, maybe refer you on to the surgeons. Oh. Okay. Hannah is concerned it might be the superbug, MRSA. Once someone's told you about it, I, could, I no, couldn't get it out of my head. And I was like, I was like, oh, God, I hope that it's not that. <laughs> but it might, it might be. No, I mean, you know, absolutely, you're right to think that, yeah. And I was like, I, I don't want to go into hospital because I don't want to, I don't want to, like, infect everyone. I don't want to be patient zero. <laughs> I think she was concerned that it could be MRSA positive because she'd been talking to some friends. I don't know without swabbing it and sending it off. <laughs> Nurse practitioner Kendall takes a swab of the abscess to send for tests. Oh, I, bet, I bet you can. I'm not Just give it a little squeeze. Yeah. Well done, well done. It's gross, that, isn't it? Like, it's the least... Yeah, it's fine. We're all right with things like that. Hannah will see a surgeon in the day clinic tomorrow. So, you can just leave that dressing on. You don't need to worry about it. Don't get it wet. It's not mm -hmm. waterproof. Carry on with the antibiotics. Carry on with your painkillers. OK. Yeah? Okay. But hopefully it's going to be fine. It just, it might just be that it needs incision and drainage and that's, that's what they'll do if they need to tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Basically, I'm going to have minor abscess surgery tomorrow at half past seven in the morning, uh, which basically just means they're going to cut me open and drain me. <laughs> That's the best sort of possible outcome, really. Hannah's boyfriend, Joe, has come to collect her. Have I been worried about it? Yeah, yeah, You yes. have been really worried about it. Yeah, it's been rubbish. We've had a, we've had a bad time there, haven't we? It's uh, it's just because we live on our own now. Like we're like fully fully fledged adults, and my mum lives really far away. So Joe is like my guardian now. <laughs> Joe looks after me. Don't you? She said don't touch it anymore. Can I not squeeze it? No, anymore? no. It's the best no, bit. No, it really really hurts. Like loads. I can't even sleep on it. But tomorrow I'm gonna have a big doctor's gonna cut it open, squeeze it. Doctors will also examine the results of blood tests to make sure Hannah doesn't have a problem with her immune system. Minor injuries bed two will be cleaned thoroughly before meeting its next patient. It's 4.15 at Newcastle's Great North Children's Hospital. Paediatric bed 27 and Porter Neve are taking 13-year-old Harvey for an X-ray. What are you doing then? I've locked my knee, playing badminton. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> just sounds stupid. Then you need to pick a more exciting sport, are you? <laughs> I thought it was just sort of rugby or something. <laughs> I would rather play any of them than badminton. During Harvey's PE lesson at school, he dislocated his knee. He's hypermobile, or double jointed, but now can't bend his leg. Thanks. Thanks. Do I need my socks? Yeah. Look at that one. Well, no, because they're like the compare, don't they? So they want to look at if your feet are different and if your very hairy ankles are different. Hi, happy. Hi. My name's Tom. Hypermobility is something that runs in his family. His mum, Joanne, and sister also have the condition. So, which leg is it we're looking at? Uh, this one. Okay. X-rays will reveal if anything's broken. Nice and still. I'm gonna go back around to see the doctor now. Okay. Right. And they'll look at the images, decide what to do next. Alright. Okay. Probably just cut it off from about there. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Nurse practitioner Ainsley has brought in A&E consultant Mr Jarman for advice. So we've got Harvey in room six at the moment who jumped up and landed quite awkwardly on his left knee. What we saw is a lovely x-ray of a normal knee. So we know there's no bony injury. There seems to be no evidence of bones being in the wrong place. 
um, such as a dislocation of a kneecap. Although patients often refer to their knee as locked for a variety of reasons, a true medical lock knee is often a situation when is patients are unable to fully straighten their knee. Let's go and uh, let's try it. If let's not, try it. If not, we can always amputate. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Is this, this is young Harvey? It is, yep. Yeah. How are you? Good. Fantastic. I'm Dr. Sorry. Bob, and you must be... Mum. Mum? Fantastic. So you wanted an amputation, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. Not for a good few years. So which is your dodgy knee? Oh, they're both dodgy. Is that, is that the dodgy one? The that's the one that's been causing trouble today. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we just had a look at the x-rays. The x-rays look good. There's no breaks to the bones. Nothing looks like it's out of place. How bad is the pain out of 10? About seven. Harvey hasn't broken any bones, but Mr. Jarman is concerned about the lack of mobility. Hold on to this bit and let go of this bit. Harvey is given gas and air to ease the pain. <laughs> what we need to do is have a wee look and see if it's just stiffened up and whether or not it's something that we can get going with a bit of gentle movement. Right. Wow, well done, that's brilliant. Okay, much better. Hey, fantastic. So, good, nothing's fallen off so far. Yeah, you're doing really you're well. Doing really well. Fab. We've got some movement, which is fantastic. Yeah. You might actually find it just sort of, uh, as soon as you get some movement back in there, mm -hmm. it disappears. And you'd be frightened to move it, so that doesn't help yeah. if you're a bit yeah. worried as well. Okay. So Harvey, our 13 year old, he uh, was able to get some free movement of that knee, which was really good. His x-ray was just showing soft tissue injury, nothing obvious broken or dislocated at the time. And he's going to get some follow up in a week's time with one of our A&E consultants to ensure that, you know, he's still got no further problems with that knee. Thank you very much. After just two hours with paediatric bed 27, Harvey is able to leave A&E with mum Joanne. Are you okay? Bed 27 awaits its next patient. Our hospital beds have given us intimate access to the work of the NHS. Susan's still off work and having regular physio. She looks set to make a full recovery. Harvey was back in hospital three days later with the same problem. He's been referred to a physiotherapist to strengthen his knee. Hannah's surgery went well. The hospital diagnosed a staphylococcal infection. Her boyfriend Joe caught it too, but following treatment, they're hoping they're over the worst. And after two weeks, Astrid's eye returned to normal. She's looking forward to travelling abroad again soon. The beds are now back on their wards, ready and waiting for their next round of patients.